beyond mind and excerpt from horizons beyond the mind. The mind has its ways and means. Mind continues like a fanatic inside. It lives in its self-created world of ignorance and negation of truth. And in the process it goes on spinning a thousand and one thoughts. The mind continues to move all over the world, riding the wings of the past and the future. How can then mind listen under these circumstances? And whatsoever it listens to will not be right listening at all. Mind is you. It is your creation. You live the mind that survives on the past and the future. Both exist no more. One is gone and the other is not yet. In that case you will listen to something else which has not been said at all. You will go on missing that which is said. You will not be in tune with now here. You will listen to the words of course because you are not there. And just that much is not listening. Remember words are the carrier of the eternal message, the energy field. And the message will not reach you. This is the reason Jesus goes on saying to his disciples, If you have ears, listen. If you have eyes, see. What does this statement mean? If you have ears, listen. If you have eyes, see. Those disciples were neither blind nor deaf. They had eyes as healthy as you have. Ears as good as you have. But Jesus' words are not strange. Certainly these are relevant. He is talking to ordinary people. So he has to bring their attention. He has to shout. But Buddha's words are strange. He is not addressing to ordinary people. Instead, he is addressing a bodhisattva, a great being, a bodhi being, one who is just on the moon, verge of being a Buddha. To listen rightly means to listen obediently. The word obedient is beautiful, but with the constant use, the word has gotten a wrong meaning. The word obedience comes from the root obedient. It means a thorough listening. Mind wanders. Why does obedience implies a thorough listening? Are they the same thing? Yes, they are same. If you listen totally and thoroughly, you will indeed obey. If truth is there, you will obey. You will not need any decision on your part. Truth is self-evident. Truth is eternal. It is beyond time and space. There are three things that never change. The sun, the moon and truth. Really, these never change for anyone, time or space. And once heard, it automatically becomes part of you. Then you will follow it. Once heard, you will become obedient to it. Hence the word obedience comes from the word obedient, listening thoroughly. The Jewish tradition says, bear your air. If you have really opened your ears, there is no interference or disturbance inside and also no distraction from anywhere. You have not only opened your ears, instead you have opened your heart. And when the seeds fall into the fertile soil of the heart, sooner or later seeds will begin to sprout first and then grow into a tree. And when bloom comes, you will reap the fruits at the dawn of new awakening. The seeds may take a little time for it to become a tree. It will have to wait for the right season, for the season of consciousness to come. But it will come certainly. You will obey it if you have heard the truth. 
This is the reason the mind does not allow you to hear it. Remember the mind is aware of the fact that once truth is heard, then there is no way to escape. So if you want to escape, it is better not to hear. Once heard and you are caught into it, then there is no escape. How can you escape when you know what truth is? Then the very phenomenon that you know what truth is creates a discipline in you. And this is an inner discipline, not the discipline that is imposed upon from outside. You start following it. And remember, it is not something that you enforce upon yourself. Instead, it comes on its own accord. All blocks have to be removed from the airs. What are these air blocks? The fear of truth is the basic block. You are afraid of truth. Nevertheless, what you say, notwithstanding that you again and again say, I want to know the truth. You remain afraid of truth. You are afraid of truth because you have lived in lies all your life. And you have lived in lies so long that all those lies are afraid, trembling. If truth comes, they will all have to leave you. They possess you. Just as darkness is afraid of light, so too lies are afraid of truth. The moment you come closer to truth, the mind will become very restless. It will create much stir and much dust and also clouds around so that you cannot hear what truth is. These air blocks have to be removed first. The basic block is fear. You are locked in fear. Buddha had said that unless you are fearless, you will not attain to truth. And look at your religion and what they have done. Your so-called religions are all based in fear. And through fear, there is no way to truth. Only fearlessness knows what truth is. When you bow down in a church or in a mosque or in a temple or to a statue or to a scripture or to a tradition, from where is your boy coming? Just watch inside and you will find fear at the base of all your actions, understanding and worship. Out of fear there can be no trust. Remember all so-called faith is based on fear. All the outer religions are fear oriented. This is why it is very rare in the world to come across a man who has faith. Because faith happens only when fear has vanished completely. Faith is disappearance of fear. Faith means trust. How can a fearful man trust? He is always thinking. He is always cunning. He is always protecting and defending as well. How can he trust? To trust you need courage. To trust you need to be able to risk. To trust you need to move into danger, into the unknown. And we do not like to move into the unknown realm. The Chinese ideogram for crisis consists of two symbols. One is the symbol of danger and the other is the symbol of opportunity. Danger and opportunity go together. Indeed, the moment is critical when you are facing danger and opportunity both. If you do not go into danger, you will miss the opportunity. If you want the opportunity, you will have to go into danger. Those who know how to live dangerously, only they are religious. Only such a person is fearless. Fear is the basic air block, then there are other blocks as well. However, these arise out of the fear. Judging, argumentation, clinging with the past and not allowing the new any entry into your being. In many forms and languages, the word for obedience is an intense form of word listening. All these words simply imply passionate, intense and total listening. Yet still there is one thing more. 
You will be surprised to know that the word absurd is exact opposite of obedience. Absurdus implies you are absolutely deaf. So if you are saying something, if you say something is absurd, you are simply implying I am absolutely deaf to what this is going to tell me. But it is good to say to an ordinary human being, listen attentively. But Buddha says this to Subhuti, why? There is something very significant in it and this has to be understood. Each word is meaningless by itself. The meaning is created only when the word is addressed to someone. To whom it is addressed will determine the meaning. The same words that I am speaking to you will mean differently when these are spoken to someone else. So you cannot find the meaning in any dictionary because dictionaries are not written for bodhisattvas. Bodhi means awakening of truth. Those who have been awakened to truth but is still far from the Buddha. All dictionaries are written for ordinary human beings. We will, I will explain this. What does it mean when Buddha says to Subhuti, listen, listen attentively. 